Hi folks, American Nomad here, coming to you from the great state of Indiana, and as you can see, it is a cloud-covered day. It is cold and not very windy, which that's a good thing. Um, I want to show you some of my, well, I want to show you the solar today, um, and I'm going to uh, show you some of the readings that I'm getting right now uh, without any sun. Okay, solar 101. Try to keep this really simple. Um, you have solar panels, you have a charge controller, you have batteries. Um, with your solar system, essentially what you're going to do is run everything from your batteries. The only thing the solar panels and a charge controller are for is to recharge your batteries. So I started making these YouTube videos just for fun. And just like 40 days ago. Then suddenly I noticed all of a sudden I had a lot of views. Like 2,000 on one video. That is so exciting. I cannot believe that I've got that many subscribers and that many views. But I only have about 60 subscribers. And over 2,000 views. So there's like 1,000 of you that need to subscribe right now. When you're watching this video, you just click that subscribe button down there at the bottom. It's absolutely free. Okay, now the rest of us are going to wait, so you go ahead and do that. So on one end you have a battery charger. On the other end you have batteries and everything you're going to use. Um, that is going to affect a big deal on, on what kind of system you need um, if you don't have solar yet you should have everybody if you don't have a system on your shed to, to charge some batteries and, and run a few things or or on your garage or you know even on your home just to run maybe your lights or or something that way when the power's down you know your refrigerator and your lights still run um, you can have a very small system that uh, will do a lot of stuff for you. Uh, my system is small. It's very simple. We're going to go over that um, here in just a few minutes. So, what you need to decide is what you're going to run on your system in order to determine how much battery power you need. And there's all different kinds of systems. You can go with a 12 volt, a 24 volt. Uh, you can go with high voltage. There are all different kinds of choices, but if you're a beginner, just to keep it simple and you don't do electrical work, um, your 12-volt car system batteries work very well. That's what I've used. Um, they're, they're easily obtainable in any kind of situation. Um, if you're a prepper or whatever, 12-volt batteries are, you know, everywhere. Uh, so I went with a 12 volt system just to keep it very simple to keep it very dependable and I've had zero problems with it uh, so this is your basic charge controller right here um, as you can see right on there Wanderer charge controller um, it is made by Renogy if I can focus in on that there for you Renogy Solar I recommend them I'm going to try to put a link in there for you um, so you can find their products. Uh, they, they're a good company. They have great stuff on, on pages, on formulas, on how to figure what you need and how to, how to put together the entire system. They have a wonderful tech line, people. So uh, I, I highly recommend uh, this company. They've been uh, very good to me and uh, very easy to work with. So that being said, I have four 100 watt, 12 volt polycrystalline solar panels. 
on the roof of this truck, mounted flat, um, nothing fancy there. Um, the only time they're pointed towards the sun is when I'm driving downhill to the south. Um, then, basically, them four panels, they each have two wires coming out the back, a hot and negative, positive, negative. And I take the four panels and four, four, four wires and hook them all together and make one wire, the positive for the positive, and then do the same thing with the negative. Um, they screw into, the, they, the wire goes into there, and then they, the screws tighten them up. Then you take uh, uh, wires. Um, they actually, you hook your battery up first. Always hook your battery up first. You take your wires uh, from your battery, just like an automotive battery, 12-volt battery in this case. And uh, you hook one wire positive, one wire to negative from your battery. Screws right in there just like the other ones. There's a place for a temperature sensor, which goes on top of your battery. Um, if you're out in maybe the desert uh, where it's really hot and your battery was low and you're charging, the temperature may go up on your battery, and this would cut off the charging until the temperature drops back down. Uh, that may be necessary for some people. Um, we have a choice, a button there, and a choice of sealed battery, gel battery or flooded battery and the light changes colors so you know that you've got it set in the right place um so it's pretty much a basic yeah there it's two wire system a positive and a negative uh, that is your whole entire charging system on solar uh, the um when you get ready to use it you can pull off of your battery 12 volt, just like a cigarette lighter plug or whatever. Um, anything that runs 12 volt, you can run directly from your batteries. I chose to put in a fuse box. So I run from the battery power to the fuse box, and then I run all my 12 volt supplies off of the fuse box. I also have an inverter. An inverter takes the 12 volt battery supply and changes it into 120 volt electric i have a pure sine wave inverter i always recommend pure sine wave um if you think about a a, a wave is a is a just a smooth uh, up and down waves uh whereas the uh, uh modified sine wave is more like going upstairs you go up and over and up and over and and the electric goes up in stages and down in stages rather than being a smooth flow of electricity. So I always recommend the pure sine wave for all your electric needs. It costs a little more, but it's very much uh, recommended. So folks, I wanted to give you a good idea as to exactly what it would cost to do what I have. Renogy is the company that I've been dealing with. Uh, they're an excellent company. Can't say enough good stuff about them. Um, fast shipping, fast service, good tech, great website. Lots of information. You can learn everything you need to know right on their website. Um, you can see that this was shipped in 2017. And I purchased the 100 watt polycrystalline solar panel. Um, now they have the monocrystalline panels. They're $99 a piece on sale. Um, I also got the pure sine wave inverter charger, um, which is now $387. And the Wanderer charge controller, which is uh, $34. So you're looking uh, four panels. That's $400, um, five, six, seven. A little over $800 plus batteries. Um, so that that's where you're at on that. It was $500 for the batteries, another $100 for the wire. So $600, uh, $1,400 for the entire system. 
So I started the system out with two batteries and then I went to four batteries. Now I purchased my batteries at Auto Value Parts Store. Um, cash customer there, as you can see. I bought two batteries the first year in 2017 when I first put solar on. And they were $99.99 a piece. Um, there was a $16 a piece core charge because I didn't have batteries to turn in. And naturally tax added on to that. It come to $248.22. Then the following year, in 2018, I went back. I purchased the same batteries. Uh, MARDC 140 amp hour. Um, 99.99 still. However, the core charge had gone up uh, to 27 a piece, so my my bill ended up being 271.76 for them. So, it, all in total, I have about $500 in batteries. There's an additional probably $100. Um, I bought some cable, some terminals. Um, and and made a couple different purchases of cable at different times and fuses. I also bought some wiring at the uh, local hardware store. So that that uh, too added into the bill. So there's probably about a hundred dollars worth of wire in the system for anybody who wanted to know. These solar panels I purchased from Renogy. I also purchased the charge controller and the inverter the inverter was i believe around five hundred dollars and at the time it was the biggest it's an inverter charger combination middle of july setting in the sun i can run that microwave microwave i can run that air conditioner all day long um along with my refrigerator and and the inverter seems to not care at all, and my batteries don't run down. However, the microwave makes the inverter beep on overload, and it'll only run for about a minute, and then the inverter shuts down. I can put something in there for 45 seconds, stop it, wait a minute, do another 45 seconds, which gets me by if I'm eating a hot dog or something like that. But um, shore power is the only way to run the microwave with the amount of power that I have. That's why I say I wish I had more than 1,000 watts on the inverter. Um, we did hook this microwave to another person's inverter. It was a 2,000 watt. It was not a pure sine wave inverter. The microwave ran. It didn't overload his inverter. It sounded strange when it was running and it did not heat um so so the pure sine wave in order to run the electronics um it, it's better for anything with electronics um and that's almost everything we have today has some sort of electronics involved in it so i recommend the pure sine wave it does cost more um but it it does what you need it to do so these are my batteries. We have 140 amp hour batteries, 225 reserve minutes. They're 12 volt, and I hooked all the positives together and all the negatives together keeping them 12 volt. I used one strand of wire here and over there. And then I just bared the wire in the spots that needed to be bared. So that's actually one solid strand of wire across there. Then I have the power coming in from the solar controller. I have power going out to the inverter and power going out to the fuse panel. 
Negatives are the same way. One for the fuse panel, one for the charge can one from the charge controller, one to the fuse panel, one to the inverter. Fairly simple wiring setup. I also have a heat sensor on the one battery. And it looks like I'm starting to get a little bit of corrosion. These batteries are getting pretty old now. But they're still holding up pretty well. I have plenty of room in here. I have my battery tester in here. I do check these occasionally. Um, and as you can see, I have plenty of room in this cabinet for more batteries if I decide to increase I uh, built this cabinet out of some plywood. I just mounted some strips of plywood on the inside all the way around the edge for a panel to lay down inside there. And then, then I set my refrigerator on top of there and I have a couple of tie downs that tie the refrigerator down.